in the repair shop today. It's like a whodunit, and I'm going to find the culprit, the smoking gun. Amanda and Julie grapple with a giant. I think this is probably the biggest bear that we've ever worked on. While Steve comes to the rescue of a rather special clock, and in the nick of time. It is as bad as I thought it was. At any point, this could have given way, and that it would have been catastrophic. But first into the repair shop today, widower Albert Thompson and his daughter, Lynn. He's hoping the team can help restore a beloved item that holds dear memories for him. You must be Lynn. I am, yes. How are we doing, Albert? Hello. Yeah. You all right? I'm just out of breath. <laughs> oh, bless you. We'll take a seat. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. What have you got here? A dilapidated radio. An old GEC. Oh. Yeah. Mark, if you don't mind joining me. Yes, of course. It's got quite a bit of history to it. Well, Mark's our expert on radios. Hello, Mark. Hi. Pleasure to meet you. Pleased to meet been? you as well. You mentioned it's got quite a bit of history. Tell me about it then, Albert. Well, um, when me and, me and the wife, Eileen, first started courting, we'd yeah. been courting about a year. OK. And um, while I was downtown, we saw these. I think it was in Booth. They used to sell all sorts at that time. Mm -hmm. And it was up there, and it was £2.50. Me and the wife clubbed together and, and we bought it. Right. And uh, we used to take it all over with us, you know, in, in car and get out at car, go up beach. Yeah. When once we got on beach and this was going, yeah. everybody started to come towards us. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. So this radio has been like the life of the party for a lot of people it's and also the family. It has. You used to go on holiday with us as well. Yeah. It's had a good life. It's had a good life. <laughs> it's had a brilliant life. <laughs> And it's lasted for years and years, and in 19... I think it was 1985, it just stopped. And we, I couldn't get it to go. And uh, a nephew of mine, he fiddles about with electrics and that, and he got it going. Right. Those on there, my nephew, they're up of um, toothbrushes. No. They are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really? Those are three toothbrushes. Oh. <laughs> and and that's, that's what he did to get it going. Apart from that, it's... Uh, it's as it is. Right. I mean, that's that's the original on yeah, there. Yeah. You can tell the amount of use, the fact the handle's always the first things to go. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. I used to have it in the greenhouse with me. Yeah. And two years ago, it stopped. And it was two years to the day when Eileen passed away. She was an absolute ace. <laughs> and, uh... I really do miss her. It's all right. And it's never gone since. So it's very precious to you, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And I just wondered if you could do anything with it and get it get it repaired. Yeah. So that I can get it back in the greenhouse. We'll get this sorted for you. Thank you. How about very much. Thank you uh, for bringing this in. All right? Is, yeah. Means Thank so you. much to me okay. and my family. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. You will Pleasure look to meet you. You will look after it, won't you? Of course I would. Don't worry. Thank Thank you. You. you take care yeah. now. Bye bye now. Bye bye Lee. The radio, to me, it means a lot. It, it was 1950s when we bought it. So, uh, yeah, it's been with us a long, long time. And uh, I just don't want to get rid of it. I want it to be working again. And that's the story. It's one heck of a big story. It's, it's something which makes you sort of feel that you really want to get it working again. Yeah, I would love it to get repaired cosmetically a sympathetic clean. Mm -hmm. So probably get Steve on these bits. Yeah. Everybody's going to be on this one. So it's over to you to get that working. Thank you very much. Mark will need to draw upon a lifetime's passion and experience in electronics and radio to get this very special item playing again. Looking at Albert's radio internally for the very first time, I can see there are a couple of things already which are going to cause an issue. One, we have a broken connection on what looks like the long wave coil, and I can see there's numerous components which will be needed to be replaced for safety anyway. So the first thing I've got to do now, of course, is get the actual chassis separated from the external case. And then this case then can go over to one of the other experts to start looking on how they're going to clean it up. A mystery item is on its way to the repair shop. Stefan Ward and his 10-year-old daughter, Jessica, 
have brought another member of the family who has seen better days. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 Pleased to meet you. Julie. Welcome to the Manhattan shop. Julie Tatchell and Amanda Middleditch are the resident bear repair pair. Oh, big Ted. Oh, he doesn't look very big, does he? Doesn't at the moment. He's looking a bit sad and sorry and needs okay. some tender loving care, I think. Oh my goodness. Oh. All right, let's so go. He's obviously empty. He's empty and, and he's been in the car out? he's been in this bag for about 15 years. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> in the garage. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So he is Big Ted. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. And we don't know what type he is. And okay. He was bought by my father in 1963 for my mum. Bought with a pay packet. I think it was £12 he cost. So what possessed your dad to...? Well, I think my mum was 17 at the time, so right. they just started going out with each other. So I think young it was love. a young love, grandiose gesture, great big teddy bear. How did he get him home? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> oh, on the him. bus, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine walking up the pathway to yeah. see her with this huge Absolutely, teddy. absolutely. Okay. I used to sit on his lap and read books when I was a young boy. You, you used to I, sit... So my, I would read and uh, all my mum and dad would read to me while I was sitting on his lap. And then when my mum and dad moved up to the far north of Scotland, he came with us. And then he was about to be thrown out, so I emptied him out, put him in the bin bag. I was going to say, how said, did you yeah. come to be empty and Well, it was out, easier to so transport yeah, that way, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I moved. And then when I got married, um, and Jessica came along ten years ago, I always said, we must get him repaired. Okay. Wow, so you've never actually seen him as a sort of stuffed, fluffy bear? You've, no. So you've never given wow. him a cuddle? No. What you know, might notice, and this is how we know who he's made by, is he's all... One. He hasn't got separate ears. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he was made by a company called Wendy Boston. And All Wendy right. Boston designed and made a bear that could be put through the mangle and then could be pegged on the washing line by its ears and they wouldn't fall off. So oh, if yeah. we can manage to get him back to how he was or as close to as we can, what, what's his future? He'll be Jessica's. Yeah. Have you got many? Too many sometimes. You can never have too many. That's <laughs> just you know what? what I we say that say. all the time. <laughs> yeah, we're going to need a bigger car. I think maybe. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for nice bringing to him meet to you. us. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> He's been in that bag for probably about 15 years. I was just looking forward to seeing him uh, brought back to life and, and in a condition that we can use him again. It's going to be fun to see him back to full health and fully stuffed, isn't it, Jess? Yes. He's amazing. I love oh. him. Yes. He's certainly a I want to see him the other way through. I want to see him in all his furry. I think we're going to have to clean all this off before we even attempt that. No. Otherwise, we're just you yeah. know, knocking our heads against a brick wall Absolutely. because it'll all stick on the outside. So, what about we start off just giving him a really good shake? Okay, so how do you propose we go about this? I'm going to move to the heads. Okay. I'm going okay. to get hold of ears. We're going to lift about a foot from the table and then we're going to go. Like that. It's a start, isn't it? It is a start. So I think we've shaken as much as we can. I think now we're just literally going to have to get this off by hand. They need plenty of space to work on all six foot of Big Ted. So Julie and Amanda take him outside, where they can really get to grips with ridding him of all his old stuffing and fluff. Quite I'm just wondering what time the picnic camp will arrive. Nice glass of red. Prosecco. Prosecco. With Big Ted's innards as clean as a whistle, it's time to turn him the right way out. So I'm just going to nip his original closing seam now. Yeah, let's just be careful as we peel it back. You ready? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's in really good condition inside. Yeah. Come on, Big Ted. Here he comes. Oh, wow. How's he looking? He is looking great. Both eyes? Yes. Yes, look at that. Look. He, when clean, is going to be absolutely stunning. 
and I can see why the family love him so much. Yeah. Beautiful. While Amanda and Julie tussle with meters of fur outside, Inside, radio expert Mark has been meticulously deconstructing and testing the transistor's components. So how are we doing, Mark? Yeah, fine. I've now taken this apart. I've got to remove some of the components. These, we call them capacitors, um, and there's about a dozen or so I'm going to have to replace. And effectively, I'm changing them for little ones like this. All right, cool. So what's this one going to do? Where's that going? That one's actually going to be going into here. Um, I've scraped back already, so I've identified its value. And this says, if you can see it on there, 0.1 microfarad. OK. And 0.1 microfarad, to confuse you, is 100,000 puff. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Yes. Yeah. Seriously, 100,000 <laughs> yeah, it puff. It's 100,000 puff, and that's 100,000 puff. What is a puff? It's a fraction, and this is going to go up, <laughs> of a farad. <laughs> It's a fraction of a farad. <laughs> Come on. You're just winding me up, isn't you? So what does 100,000 puff do? In essence, it's a value which has been calculated yeah. to allow certain signals which you do not want to have at that part of the circuit. Well, that made perfect sense to me. You're going to change it, basically? <laughs> yes. OK. So you've got a bit of work to do, then? I've got a fair amount of work right, to do. Well, let me get that case off, yeah? OK, thank get you. Started on there that. we go. Thank you. Enjoy that. I will do. <laughs> but, um, yeah, carry on with your 100,000 puff. puff. Yeah. <laughs> The capacitors enable the radio to tune into particular frequencies. But Mark suspects there's more to this repair than simply replacing them. Now, one weak point of a radio of this type of design is, in fact, the local oscillator. And the local oscillator is, in, in essence, the heart of the radio. And my gut feeling is that that's where my fault's going to be. So the next thing, then, really, is to use an oscilloscope. And that's something similar which you may have seen, say, in a hospital, which can monitor a heart, which will then hopefully show me a waveform. And there is absolutely nothing. The oscillator is not functioning. While Mark continues getting his waveforms in a twist, trying to diagnose the faulty radio, gear and cog genius Steve Fletcher has delved into his store of bits and bobs. He wants me to make a new tuning knob, and I've found lots of components, uh, a lid off a pot, various brass bits, this lamp stand that I'm going to turn the outside off. I'm just about to start the, the knurling of the, the lamp stand that's going to be the outside of the, the tuning uh, knob. Um, and knurling is basically putting a, a texture uh, on, on a piece of metal or, or anything, actually, just to give it some grip. That's brilliant. That works really, really well. Very, very pleased with that. Jay's next conscript to Team Radio is leather expert Susie. Susie, me old mucker, it's the handle. Doesn't look very healthy, does it? No. So what we didn't want to do, we didn't want to have a brand new one on here. So that will go on there. OK. Somehow, because this is from a similar radio. OK. And as it's from a similar radio, it's slightly bigger. Oh, I see. So that's the original. I that one's so. the donor, which is slightly too big, but it does look the part. Matches perfectly, doesn't it? It does. So, um, what you're asking me to do is retrofit this to this radio? Yes, please. I want you to work your magic. If anybody can, I know you can. OK. So, All let's right. make this one special for Albert, yeah? yeah? No problem. Susie wants to keep as much of the original handle as possible, reinforced with parts of the replacement one, all backed with a strengthening piece of leather. With hand sewing, it is overall a much better quality finish. It just takes such a long time. Mark, meanwhile, has identified yet another issue with the circuitry. So applying um, the voltmeter against the, one of the leads of the transistor, I'm, in reality, I'm expecting to get a voltage. It's clearly not there. It's very, very low. And if I look very carefully here, in fact, I can tell that there is actually a break in the wire, which I didn't initially see. It's like a whodunit. There's somebody's done a murder and you're now looking for the suspect. In this case, the murder, the, um, the transistor's been snuffed out, there's no voltage present, and I'm gonna find the culprit, the smoking gun, and I think I may have found it. This could be case closed, as Mark addresses the broken wire. 
Then it's time to bring back the test equipment. Mm -hmm. it's, trying, it's trying to pick up, but I don't think the oscillator's still functioning right. There might be another break somewhere. No, there's a lot more to do with this. This is a sick radio. Next into the repair shop are Nigel and Viv Birch, bringing with them a fragile piece of family history. Hello, how are we doing? Hello, Jay. <laughs> how are you? I'm Viv. All right, Viv. Yes. And Nigel. All right, Nigel, Very I'm Jay. Nice to so what have we got here then? We've got an old skeleton clock. A skeleton <clears throat> clock. Hold on yeah. a minute then. Steve, got a clock over here, mate. Okay. Hello, I'm Steve. Hello, Steve. Nice oh. to meet you. Hello. Viv. Steve is the resident clockmaker, well versed in anything that ticks. Oh, my word. Now, that, that does look nice. And that would sit over the top. That's a really nice-looking clock. So what is the history behind this, then? Um, <clears throat> it was my grandfather's clock. He was a professional soldier before the First World War. I think he won it in a race. OK. Um, right. He was wounded in the latter half of the First World War. He got a shell splinter in his shoulder. Ooh. And so it completely ruined his left arm. Right. Uh, and after the war, he took up athletics or running okay. to just help with his health generally. Yeah. And I understand this was a prize he won. Wow, that's a nice prize, though, isn't it? When he died, it got passed on to my father, and he had it for years. I remember seeing it in his front room, ticking away merrily on right. high days and holidays. Oh, bless. <laughs> I used to wind it every Sunday, and subsequently on his death, it's come down to me. So when is the last time you saw this working, then? 15 years ago, 20 years ago. It's never worked in our house. It sat oh. on my... <laughs> Uh, shelf okay. in the dining room, and we just look at it. Well, it's a nice thing to look at, and I, I think that, correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but it's called a skeleton clock because it has no body. Is That's that correct? correct, yes. Yeah? That's right. And you've got the original um, That's dome. The original which, dome. Which is fantastic. Yes. Most of these get broken. I'm uh, not uh, uh, even trusted to dust are that. Are you not? No. You rarely get an original one, so it's nice to see that. If we can get it working, it is my intention to um, pass it on to my son. Brilliant. Who's uh, coincidentally suffered almost the same injury as my grandfather did. No. He's only 30 now, and three years ago, uh, he was involved in a horrible motorbike accident. And he's lost the use of his left arm. Oh, my word. So having this handed down to him, what's that going to mean to him and you? Well, I'm hoping it will be a big inspiration for him, and he's hoping to compete in the Paralympics in Tokyo in 2020. Really? All right. That's his challenge, that's his target. So is it fair to say that he's got a fighting spirit from his grandfather? Oh, I would think or so. Or great yes. grandfather, isn't great it? Great grandfather, great yes. Grandfather. yes. Yeah. I can see how much it means to you it, it and will, will yeah, mean to him as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 So Absolutely. you're going to hand this down to him and it'll be on his mantelpiece. That's exactly Next right. to his gold medal. Yes. <laughs> That's the idea. Listen, thank okay. you thank for bringing you. it in. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. It's a sort of... Um, a sign of my grandfather's courage in adversity, almost. And now that uh, my son is in the similar sort of position, it's going to be really nice to be able to pass that on down to him and give him some sort of inspiration as well. This is quite a nice skeleton clock. It's, it's been well finished. Um, there's masses of wear. All right, I'm just going to lay it on its back, then I can... Take the uh, main plate off. This is where we find out where all the trouble is. All right, but that's the one side. This is the one thing that I've been looking at. Oh, it is as bad as I thought it was. This pivot here <clears throat> has worn down to almost nothing. That means that at any point, if someone had carried on using the clock, this could have given way and that it would have been catastrophic. It does actually mean that I've got to set to and uh, re-pivot that, which is, it can be quite a tricky job. The other thing that I've noticed is that some of the teeth on this wheel here, this first wheel, there's a whole section of teeth that are bent over. Oh, dear. So there's a, an awful lot of work involved in this, and, uh, yeah, I've got my work cut out on this one. Over on their workbench, Julie and Amanda have also got their hands full. They've cleaned up 55-year-old Big Ted, but before they can begin the many repairs, they must first remove his eyes. 
which were rather special for their time. So this company were the first company that actually patented safety lock-in eyes to make them safer for children. Up until then, they were glass and on wire. They're in two parts. So you can see the actual screw part is the pupil of the eye. Quite ingenious, really, at the time, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. The company are historic, I think, in their own right, for actually mm. pioneering this. Mm. At the moment, we are working on the, the main repairs that Big Ted needs. I've come across some holes in Big Ted's fabric, and for this one, I'm going to have to actually patch it. Hopefully, if he's got enough fluff still on him, that when we groom him through, that little bare bit won't show. Bare bit. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> the bald patch won't show. So we've just got to sort of painstakingly work our way around the whole of his body, make sure we haven't missed anything, and then he'll be all strong again. <laughs> I think this is probably the biggest bear that we've ever worked on. Jay, meanwhile, has a delivery for the next stage of the process. How are we doing, ladies? Oh, yeah. thanks, Jay. Now this, Brilliant. 20 kilos of stuffing. Yep. yep. And it's heavy. We don't think this is going to be enough. I think we need we to get another one. Get yeah, another we one. may all what, another, another 20 kilos? 10, I think. Another, another 10. 10. That is under pressure in there. So and once this is open, all of the stuffing just, it just starts to... Come you want out. to open it, don't you? <laughs> I do want to open it, but <laughs> I'm a bit worried about it. It's not going to explode or anything. <laughs> it's not <laughs> like a chunk in the box. Smart. I don't trust you. <laughs> it is our favourite bit is when we it? get a new bale, yes. <laughs> it's just going to grow now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is a polyester filling. Okay. It's clean, it's hygienic, it's safe stuffing, and it's the yeah. most appropriate thing nowadays to put back inside Big Ted. So this has, <laughs> this has expanded. Can you still see, yes. Amanda? You said, I can still see you. <laughs> but you still want me to order another 10 kilos? So. Yeah, let's be on the safe side. All right, I'll get all three. <laughs> all right, thanks, <laughs> Jay. The final repairs are finessed. Then it's time to get all six foot of Big Ted back to his cuddly self. It's a mammoth task we've got here. No. We've been looking forward to doing this, though. OK, I'm going to take him a bracelet off because I don't want to lose it in Ted's leg. No. And together. Ooh, <laughs> it's going to be a long day. <laughs> I'm just going to go in with my stuffing stick and really firm up and make sure we've got it into all the corners. We go in with this and twist like this and it gets tighter and tighter and tighter until it's nice and firm and it won't lose its shape. With the stuffing starting to fill out Big Ted's nooks and crannies, it's time to pop his eyes back on. The eyes are actually quite small for such a big a Ted. It's like putting on the fiddliest pair of earrings in the dark. Yes. <laughs> Have a feel and see what you think. Oops. Perfect. Well done. OK. It's been a team effort and taken days of work to renovate a beloved 1950s transistor. However, it's still radio silence over on Expert Mark's workbench. It's been quite a, a, a game, this particular one, because there's been so many faults with it. And the aerial has a coil which is broken and I cannot locate where it's broken from. It's so fine, the wire. And the only way now to resolve the problem is to actually replace the whole unit. And if I do it right, we will then have some magic and may even hear some music in the air. Having swapped out the broken aerial for a donor unit, Mark reconnects and solders the wires. This actually looks very encouraging. We've now got a what we call a sinusoidal waveform. That is one which is repetitive, goes up and down, and that is working well. Looking at it, I can tell straight away it's operating in the long wave bandwidth. We have a switch on the radio for medium wave. Yeah, look at that. Uh, we have actually have got both functioning. So that now tells me we've got a good chance of getting this old lady back into operation again.
Owner Albert was just 22 when he and his then girlfriend Eileen bought the radio, which provided the soundtrack to their love story for over 50 years. Daughter Lynn has returned with him. I think my dad's been quite lost without the radio. Even though it didn't work before, it was still in the house, so it was still there. I'm hoping that when he gets it back, he can listen to it um, and it'll bring back memories for him and my mum when my mum was there. So, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> We meet again, how we doing? Hello, yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hello, mate. Yeah, come here. Oh. How you doing? Oh, all the better for seeing you, mate. Oh, bless you. <laughs> really am. Take a seat. Nice oh. to see Hi, you. Thank you. Hello, Pleasure there. to meet you again. So, tell me, what was the radio like when you brought it in? I couldn't get it to go. It was just stood there for two years, and hopefully. Hopefully. So what are you <laughs> hoping? <laughs> yeah. What are you hoping? I'm hoping. Yeah. It is in working order. I want it to play. You ready for it? Oh, oh look at that. Oh, my you got God. Your <laughs> oh. oh, new volume. <laughs> oh. oh, that is brilliant. Oh, thank you so much. No, it's a pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Yes, I'm glad you like it. One little thing. We left the toothbrush handles on it because I thought that was quite cute. Um, who repaired it? So it was quite, it was quite nice. Oh, thank you. Hope you don't mind. No, 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 no. It's brilliant. <laughs> Look at the handle. Oh, it's, like, wow. it's like it was when, when I bought yeah. it. <laughs> well, the next test is to show you if it's working or not. So I'm not touching it. You're not touching <laughs> it. Right. Well, I'm going to touch it. For the big moment, Jay's enlisted the help of a local radio station. That is brilliant. Is that good? Oh, thank you, guys. <laughs> Pleasure. Oh, I don't know what to say. Don't have to say anything. You've said everything by yeah. the way you are. This is absolutely superb. I never thought this would be going again. <laughs> never. Mum would be saying now as well, right, you can get your greenhouse done. <laughs> you well, that's it. No you yeah, exactly, that's she, what she'd she, say. She was yeah. a slave driver, there's no yeah. doubt about that, but she was a brilliant um, lady. Brilliant. Come here, sir. It's been a pleasure. Nice to see you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. It's been an absolutely fantastic ordeal. I never expected that, never. I didn't think he'd be able to do it. And it's all nice and clean, isn't it? And I've still got my two tooth, my three tooth. <laughs> yeah. I think just looking at it, we was like, wow. But then to actually hear it playing was even better. He is, he is an absolute genius. He's made an absolutely superb job. He wants a damn night or eagles. <laughs> I'm still shaking now. I am absolutely over the moon with it. Back inside the barn, clockmaker Steve is cleaning the brass components of the ornate Victorian skeleton clock. So you can see, even after the uh, first clean, how it's come up pretty gleaming. He can now begin work repairing the worn pivot that had caused the clock to stop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, cut this off, drill it, and put a new pivot in it. I'm just going to cut that now. Now I need to um, drill it. There we go. Nice, new, fresh pivot. One of the things that I identified that was wrong in this clock was that about 30 of the teeth of this wheel are bent. What I use is this tool. It's actually a broken watchmaker's tool, uh, but it's got a, a nice taper on it, and that slides into the slots, and then you can get a, a tight hold and, and just twist the bent teeth straight. So it's a matter of going around all of them now. So this is basically uh, doing a bit of dentistry. 
good, that's straightened out nicely. Steve's in his element repairing this antique timepiece, but he's going to need help from his fellow craftsmen to complete the job. Will Kirk is the go-to guy when it comes to wood restoration. Ooh, missing some veneer there. Yeah, and I wonder whether that's Brenton's field there, putting that metal inlay in. Brenton, Brenton you come and have a look at this. Could you help by filling in that yep. inlay there? So we'll it's just, metal. Yeah, I can pierce you a new one of those. So if I make that, yep. fit that, and then you can Stick glue, it in. glue it in when you've glue done your veneer. Yeah? Sounds like teamwork. That's quite a complicated design. So what I've done, I photocopied it, and I'm going to stick it onto a piece of brass, and then I'm going to saw around all of those little edges. Silversmith Brenton West gets to work carving out the perfect inlay, while Will puts his antique furniture expertise to good use on the rosewood base. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to match the grain of the wood, not necessarily the colour. It's easier for me to match a new piece of lighter veneer to a darker area because then I can sort of darken the colour down in order to match it in. Will glues down the replacement veneer and secures it in place while it dries. I can be quite liberal with this because I'm going to sound the entire thing over. So I'm going to let that first coat of polish dry, and once it has, then I can go around with some pigments and a bit of polish and um, start blending in to match the surrounding veneer. OK, well, I've sawn the photocopy out. Great job. Okay. Now, I've left the piece of paper on top to stop yeah. you scratching it, because that's polished underneath. You That's so upside clever. down. Brilliant. Nice job. Excellent. Lovely. Thanks a lot, Okay, Brenton. no worries. Cheers. How are we doing, Steve? Yeah, all right. You have done a brilliant job here. It does have a dome that goes on top of it. Yeah. That's supposed to be cleaned as well. I'm <laughs> going to help you. All right, thank you, sir. That's kind. Years and years of grime. Oh, do you know that sound? Squeaky clean. That's a good sound, isn't it? There you go. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Doesn't that come up well? No, it does. I think they're going to be proper happy with Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Thank you very much. More than welcome. Right. Yeah, be careful now. I will. Don't drop it. I won't. Things are rather more horizontal in the toy repair section. Right, so you need to get up into that bit between his ears, jump some more stuffing. Hold on. Huh? Between his ears. I know, but my arm's not quite long well, enough. Well, I'll help to pull him down this way. And you push it up. Julie and Amanda have been tackling the mammoth task of stuffing a previously deflated Big Ted for the last six hours. Your bear obsession has literally got out of control. Oh, why, so why are you both on the floor? Well, having too much fun too over much here, fun. aren't they? It's not as easy as it looks, actually. We've got <laughs> to get... We, here's the hole to stuff right. in. Here's the distance away from the hole we've got to reach. Oh, that's what you're doing. I thought you were just messing around on the floor. Oh, my God! <laughs> so nice. it's as well. But, of course, well, your you? arms might be right. longer. Hello, hello. Oh. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Your, your arms are longer. You're welcome to... Yeah! Oh, yeah. Gosh. Give him some stuffing. It's <laughs> kind of like trying to birth a cow, isn't it? <laughs> Why didn't we think of someone with longer uh, arms to begin like with? It's exhausting. Oh, well, that's my workout done. That's your <laughs> um, This looks really quite creepy, but I'm sure oh, that when it's finished, no, it's really lovely. It's amazing, isn't it? Well, if you need us, you know where we are. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. absolutely. All right. Good luck. See ya. With Big Ted's family due back to collect him, there's just enough time to reinstate his distinguished features. Pleased? Yeah. High five? Well I think done. you need a hug this time. Yeah, I do. <laughs> well done. Well done. When owner Stefan brought Big Ted to the repair shop, he had been in hibernation, flat-packed for 15 years, and was a shadow of his former cuddly, colossal self. Ten-year-old Jessica had never seen him in all his glory. But today, that's all going to change. 
as she's returned with her dad to collect him. Big Ted, when we brought him in, was in a terrible state. I'm just looking forward to seeing him again and seeing how he looks and uh, just bring him back to life so that Jessica can enjoy him. How are nice you? to see him again. Are you excited? Yes. The last time I saw him was flat. <laughs> yes, in a bin bag. <laughs> in a bin bag, yeah. yeah. I think we should just let them see, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, we won't make you suffer. One, two, three. Oh, wow! Oh, that's amazing. What do you think? They can't even talk. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, mate, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, you're brilliant. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Oh, you're so soft. Thank you. Oh, I love you. I love him. I thought you might. <laughs> I think you'll be cuddling him tonight, won't you? Yeah. No, definitely. he's wonderful. Wonderful. He looks in great condition. <laughs> you happy? Yeah, definitely. Very, very happy. I never thought I'd see him again. No, it's brilliant. Thank you. You're very welcome. We've enjoyed doing him. Shall we take him home, then? Yeah. I haven't seen him for so long, so just actually seeing him for that first time just blew me away. I was speechless. And he looked absolutely brand new. Are we ready? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep him forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. With Big Ted safely on his way home, Steve's on his final push with the skeleton clock. With all the components cleaned and repaired, it's time to rebuild the elaborate mechanism. After you've done all the work to a, a clock like this, it's really nice to get it back together and looking as it should do. Just make sure all the wheels turn. Good. I'm going to pop the pendulum on. And all being well, it will tick away merrily. There, beautiful. With the final pieces in place, all that's left is for Steve to reveal his work to owners Nigel and Viv. With them is their son, Peter, who's taken a break from his Paralympic training to accompany his parents. You can see how much it means to him. It's a very emotional piece of family history. I remember listening to the clock in my grandfather's uh, front room. It had a very even, deep tone to it. I think just listening to it and hearing it again will bring back an awful lot of memories. Hello. How are Good you? you? I'm fine, thank Hi. you, Steve. Are you? Yes, I'm Hi, good. Stephen. Nice to see you again. You too. My son, Peter. Hello. Nice, nice to meet you. Hi. Right. So, can you remember how your clock looked when you brought it in? Oh, yes. Yeah. It looked um, tired, I think, was the expression yeah. I would use. Yeah. Uh, bits falling off. It needed some work, didn't it? It did a bit, yeah. Yeah. So, you can remember the clock as well, then? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was, well, it's on, uh, the clock's always been on the mantelpiece, so... Uh, right. OK. Something we can look at, but not touch, sort of thing. Right. OK. So, I'm excited to see what it looks yes. like in its glory. OK, well, I'll not keep you in suspense any longer. So. Oh. oh. Crikey, that's amazing. <sighs> oh. The colour. Can you hear it? Oh. What a job you've done. <laughs> that's the colour I can't get over. Yeah, that's, that's just. Right. Sparkling, isn't it? Look at the badge as well. Oh, that's gorgeous. And the ribbon. Yeah. Dad was always on about getting some new velvet. Oh, that's just amazing. You just brought it back to life. Yeah. You put. Oh. You have got gorgeous. the time right. <laughs> <laughs> that's superb, oh. isn't it? Wow. You okay? Oh. That dial. I love it. Yeah. I think Dad and Grandfather would be looking down on you and thinking, job well done. Thank you. What have you got um, planned for it now? Where are you going to put it? Um, Pete here is just about to buy a house, aren't you? Yeah, we're looking at houses at the minute. And um, so what I intend to do, as soon as Peter's got a house, I'm going to present it to Pete and put it on your mantelpiece. 
So that would be the fourth generation then. And um, <clears throat> it was an inspiration for our grandpa. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully it'll be an inspiration for you to help with your continued recovery. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wow. I didn't know that was going to... Oh. Oh, it's going to be yeah. it's going to be treasure. That's for sure. Yeah. I'll shake your hands, Doom, over this side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's lovely. When Steve first unveiled the clock, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. After all those years looking at it, from how I'd remembered it to seeing what it actually should be like, just knocked me flat, really. Just looking at it, it was just so amazing. It just didn't look like the same clock that we brought in. Well, it was symbolic for my great-granddad's recovery. He went on to do good things in athletics, and it's massively going to spur me on to doing good things as well. And with a new house that we're shortly going to be moving into, and it's going to take centre stage, that's for sure.